is diversity and inclusion changed the alternatives industry in recent years? What are you doing to improve diversity and inclusion at your firm? I think in good firms, such as the one I work for, there are no barriers or glass ceilings. There is a culture of fairness, courtesy and respect. Maybe some firms need to address their culture and firms need to be mindful of associating themselves with those that do not re necessarily reflect their values. We've attacked this issue from, from multiple angles, you know, not only making sure that we have a diverse group of individuals participating on investment committees and, and, and you know, leading the charge on various aspects of all the funds that, that we manage here at, at JP Morgan, uh, but also making sure that more broadly within the firm, we're fostering an environment uh, characterized by, by equity and inclusion. In terms of what we're doing, I would more answer that question in terms of what AIM is doing as the global representative for the alternative investment industry. And given our role, we look to promote best practices around DE&I and raise awareness for greater consideration for DE&I across the industry. First and foremost, it is no longer seen as a nice to have, but a must. Diversity is a competitive advantage because it widens the scope for top talent and inspires better solutions generated from the synergies of diverse experiences. Prequin's annual Women in Alternatives report shines a light on disparities in the industry as it relates to gender diversity. And the latest version found that female representation is increasing, however, still to only 21%, with just 13% in senior positions. When we think about recruiting, it's an active effort to think about diversity and inclusion. And um, our belief is that a diverse workforce is actually a better workforce. And I think uh, we've seen that um, in some cases in the results um, for our own business. Opening people's eyes to the opportunities this space can bring, I think is an enormous, uh, enormous thing that we must do as professionals. And I think it could be a terrific career opportunity for the folks on the other side. One of the things that we've been starting to think about and we're doing now is to, is to try and attract more, um, more interns, particularly more, more female interns in the, in the, in the, on the investment side in African private credit. So we're committing to hiring more and bringing in more employees into our investment team and dedicating at least one or two spots to women every year. We've created committees within our firm um, to, to further those points, to really go down to the staff level and really understand what's driving their decisions in terms of what's the right employer doing, what it, what's important to them, and really not um, taking anything for granted in that area. And I think it's really paid dividends as we've seen um, kind of these initiatives that take a time to put into place and to see the fruits of that work develop. There have been more than 100 first closes of women-owned cap venture capital funds every year since 2017. But despite this growth, the scale of female-owned funds is dwarfed by funds controlled by men. Female-owned venture capital funds constituted almost 10% of the number of first-time funds. So there is so much more room to grow there. And assuming that female-owned funds continue to deliver for investors, we see the proportion only growing over time. And we're focused on developing practical guidance for the industry and all our work on this topic is open source and made available to everyone, not just our members. We work, we work in a collaborative fashion where other members and industry organizations can produce guidance and insights on this topic. We, as an industry, are just getting started, but there are many reasons to be optimistic that the DEI movement will continue to accelerate. 